we're back at the aquarium. And the bit I like best is the first thing you go through. This is a tunnel and there are a lot of sardines circling above the tunnel and it's like you're in the shoal. Uh, sardines and for some reason A, no what are they called, uh, stingray, I don't know, rays that uh, circle the opposite way to the sardines. And the sardines, well, there must be um, a thousand or more. A thousand, maybe. And they just seem to like to circle. I don't know why. Maybe there's not enough oxygen in the water. <laughs> but um, they're swimming round and round and round. And uh, it's quite heavenly. Um, yeah. But um, our goldfish died recently. But I, um, through only a goldfish, I became aware of the fact that, in fact, fish as well are quite intelligent. And so, um, um, apparently I'm told that every time I come to the aquarium I sound a bit sad. But I think that's just my tone of voice. <laughs> um, uh, proceeding on into the uh, aquarium, there's a little bit here which shows how, just how fast the come on straight, and that's the uh, short bit of water, a narrow bit of water between um, Honshu and Kyushu. And it's now going at 16 kilometers an hour, 17 kilometers an hour, it's increasing. But I think at uh, the full speed when the tide is changing, it goes at uh, about um, uh, 40 kilometers an hour. <laughs> and that was, um, um, oh, it's slowing down again. Or maybe it only goes at 17, but 17 is a hell of a pace. And no one can row against that. And that's why the, um, the, Heike is it? I think the Heike lost a famous battle and were obliterated in this uh, narrow strait of water because um, the Genji, the, the people that they were fighting, knew that the tide would change and that everyone would be blown back along the strait and based their strategy upon that whereas the Heike did not and they lost and they were blown back into the into the ranks of the um, opposing forces and um, uh, cut to bits there's a lot of people here because at the moment there's a diver in with a fish um, explaining things. There's the diver in there. And um, uh, she's explaining what each of the what each of the fish are. Oh, it's a he. With a bit of a high pitched voice. Oh, and he's digging a fish up out of the sand. Oh, that's an interesting. There's a uh, kind of, um, I don't know what it is. It looks like a bit like a catfish. Oh, uh, it swam off quickly. Um, oh, and there's another big one there. And he dug it up out of the sand where it was having a rest and it got angry and swam off. Uh, that's a kind of shark there. It's called a umbrella shark, Kasazame. Uh, this thing here that's going to fly past, yeah. Ah, um, so um, the, the, um, the lady is explaining that, um, that um, the difference between rays, flat rays and sharks is that uh, a, a proper ray has its uh, gill slits on, the, um, on its, on its uh, lower flat surface whereas sharks have them on the side of their heads. But there are plenty of um, sharks, which are flat sharks, which are called rays because they're flat, but in fact they're really sharks because the gills are on the side of their heads. And I'm glad that I'm not the only person that finds it difficult to understand what this guy is saying. 
through his mask because the lady there just um, uh, translated, as it were, or repeated what he said in um, uh, more um, uh, legible, no, no, what's the word for it, hearable Japanese. It looks like fun. I'd like to dive in there with a fish and, and touch them. Um, that's interesting. Um, um, that, um, that rays are born not from eggs, rays and uh, sharks as well. Um, uh, that uh, there may be baby rays because rays are not born as eggs but as um, but as as fish isn't that amazing sharks as well I think he said she said that uh, they're not born from eggs they're born as small fish and so he's looking now for a, for a, um, he was looking for a ray a baby ray but he didn't manage to find one and that's the end of his talk apparently Goodbye, he says. Goodbye. Oh, so, sharks are born as um, as fish, and my children have uh, disappeared, and the fish are looking concerned. Hello. But they're quite intelligent, I think, actually, surprisingly. That you know, they look back. They're thinking, hmm, what's that guy doing with that black object in his hand? Which is my video camera, of course. And um, the, the children like him. Maybe it's something to do with um, the absence of gravity. I'm into gravity lately. The self as a center of gravity. Yeah. And proceeding on, um, that's the times when the diver comes out. And it's a kind of popular time to go and watch that aquarium because the diver explains things. Ah, and this is the same tank. Oh, no, no. This is a warmer tank, I believe, with um, warm water fish, perhaps. I'm not sure. Um, uh, they're friskier, these people. And there's a um, some kind of angel fish with a lot of wings there. But um, compared to the waters of Guam, and where else did we go recently? Uh, Cebu in the Philippines. Uh, they've chosen a lot of very dour looking fish. Why don't they have some colourful ones? Well, this guy's pretty colourful. And he's looking at us. He's come to see. Hello. Definitely looking at us. Yeah. yeah. Goodbye. Mm. What they could do is arrange it so that the, the feeding takes place from this side somehow by some kind of canister arrangement. And that would mean that the fish would believe that when people came to the glass, they would think that they're about to be fed and then they'd express more interest because uh, my goldfish, it wasn't really all that intelligent. It just knew that when a human came, it was going to get fed. And so it sort of got excited about that and swam towards me. But um, these chaps uh, don't have that association, so they rather ignore us. But they are still showing a bit of interest. That one looks like he's always doing a kiss. And um, everyone's taking photos with their smartphones. But uh, not a lot more I can say about fish. Um, yeah, gravity. Gravity may be um, in part, I don't know what part, but in part an illusion. Obviously you can't jump off blocks of flats, but um, I think maybe something to do with the way in which our visual field is um, uh, sort of orientated maybe in part. Um, a convention. I'm not sure, but I get that feeling that there's an extent to which gravity is um, conventional as opposed to um, real. 
and that's why things like um, uh, rocking stones and fish floating in tanks and also trains a lot of people get really um, wild about trains because these things fish trains and um, rocking stones all mess with our sense of gra um, gravity uh, trains look like the world is moving because they have a world inside them and people inside them and sort of a whole a frame of reference, a whole um, different frame of reference, which um, you don't know whether it's your frame of reference is moving or the, the, the train's frame of reference is moving when you look at them. And that is the, the truth, you know, that um, there is no privileged frame of reference. However, we generally feel that there is only one, but, you know, the, the sort of, that, um, that uh, the, the, not the train, but the, the earth is the, the one uh, Cartesian um, frame of reference. And um, that isn't so, it's just a convention. And so when we see things that sort of mess with that, we, um, we I don't know, we feel excited, like this fish here. Mm. I'm excited by this fish. Anyway, I think that's bad enough.